Hi guys, my name is Mickey Blom. I am a certified Oracle Cloud Consultant within the Quister company, and I'll be guiding you through this demo. If you have any inquiries or remarks afterwards, feel free to get in contact with me and enjoy the show. So welcome to the live demo. Currently we're in the Quister Oracle Cloud environment, and I will be showing you how easy it is to create a VM instance. So this is the dashboard you will be opening when you're accessing the Oracle Cloud URL web page. So from here, we can create various amount of servers and do a, yeah, we can we will do a lot of stuff. And as you can see here, we are today we're going to create a VM instance. And it's already saying that it will take us around two to six minutes. But if I click here, I will be immediately brought to the create a VM instance page. But I will show you another method. So for the compute instances, this is our Crystor Oracle Cloud infrastructure environment. So these are, for example, all the servers we have created for our own demo purposes. Um, and from here, we can just click the Create Instance button. So these are all the instances in the Crystor OCI compartment. And what is a compartment? Um, well, a compartment is nothing more than a group of for administration purposes so that it makes it easy to access and keep the overview clean. So we will create an instance. So from here we can name it and this is nothing more than just an administrative name in the Oracle Cloud. So this is not the actual host name. So for now we will just call it Quistor Webinar. Uh, availability domain. So where do you want to have your machine to be up and running? So for now, we will just click availability domain one. Operating system. It's uh, Oracle Linux by default. So we will change it to, in this case, we will change it to Windows, but we have a, yeah, we have a lot of operating systems we can choose. So these are the standard ones, Ubuntu, CentOS, Linux, Windows. Then we also have some Oracle images for dedicated machines, eBusiness Suite, partner images, which are Fortinet, Redmines, Customs, which you can upload by yourself, boot volumes, which you can also create by yourself, and these are some image OCIDs. So for now, we will go to the platform images and we will create a Windows Server 2012 R2 standard. So the latest build of the selected image is used. So we will agree for the images and proceed. So now we have the Windows 2012. So we have two instance types. We do a virtual machine. So a virtual machine is an independent computing environment that runs on top of physical bare metal hardware. Or do we want to be, um, or do we want it to be a bare metal machine? And the bare metal machine compute instance gives you dedicated physical server access for highest performance and strong isolation. But for now, we will just choose a virtual machine. Instance shape. So here you will determine how many OCPUs and memory we're going to assign to the machine. So by default, it is 2.1, which is one CPU, OCPU, of course, and 15 gigs of memory. If you want to change the shape, we click the change shape button which will bring up all the available available shapes for this windows machine so we can really choose whatever we want do we want to uh, have a uh, low performance or high performance it really, it really depends on what application you will be running and of course the more cpus and the more memory you will choose will also affect the usage of your uh, bucket of hours and resources so we can, for example, overpower it by choosing dense uh, O224, which has 24 OCPUs and 320 gigs of memory. But for now, we will just stick to the VM standard. One CPU, 15 gigs of ROM. Select shape. Then we can configure a boot volume. So by default, the Windows server is dedicated to have 256 gigabytes in the C drive. So if you want to customize it, we can either, for example, choose 300. And as you saw in the warning, 
please select a value between 256 and 32,768. So for now, we we'll just 300. We can choose to enable transit uh, encryption, or we can choose a key from the key management to encrypt this volume, but for now, we will not do this. Login credentials. So upon creating this instance, both a username and an initial password will be generated for you. They will be available on the details screen for the newly launched instance, and you must create a new password upon logging into the instance for the first time. So this is the networking part, which has all been set up up front. So we have created a virtual cloud network uh, called Crystor Demo inside the Crystor OCI compartment. Uh, and into this, we have created our subnets. Uh, for now, we will have a public subnet, which is the VLAN tier one. Then we have some advanced options. For management, we can really choose in which compartment we want to have this, but for now we will stick to the root compartment, which is Quister OSTI. And as you can see, we've also created more uh, compartments for this example, for the, our cloud monitoring, for a pass offering, or for a proof concept. But for now, we will choose the root compartment. A fault domain. A fault domain is basically uh, a physical rack inside your availability domain. So we have chosen availability domain one, and now we can choose like, okay, in which physical rack do I want to have this? Uh, we can choose domain one. User data, you can choose to specify a startup script that will run when your instance boots up or restarts, but we are not going to do this right now. We will enable monitoring, and tagging is a metadata system that allows you to organize and track resources within your tenancy. Tags are composed of keys and values which can be attached to resources. For now, we will not use tagging. Then when we switch to the networking options, we can specify a private and a public IP address, as well as the host name. So we can untick this so that it will not have a public IP address, but for now, we will keep this enabled. So we have a private IP address, which can only be accessed inside your network. And then we also have a public IP address, which can be accessed from anywhere on the world, as long as you have internet connection. So we can specify the IP address, but I will leave it empty so it will generate something automatically. And we can choose the host name, and I will choose Quistor Web. The image, this is an image built if you want to go to a previous Windows release, but for now we will just choose the latest. So then we can click the Create button. So now we will have a page in front of us saying that the uh, instance is being provisioned. So all the details are shown here. So it's present in the first availability domain, first fault domain. So in this case, it will be in Frankfurt. The shape, as you can see, the details were filled in. So the cloud network is Crystal Demo. This is the actual IP address for the private use, and this is the IP address for public use. So if we can open a command prompt, and we will, from here, ping to the public IP address. So now I'm just on my local laptop, not connected to any dedicated network. And we can ping the address from here. And then eventually we can see after a while that it will respond. So this is the 130.61.34.78. So now it's just cre it's still creating the machine. So I will leave this to the side. So from here we can we have all the details. Uh, we can see when it's launched. We can see the compartment of course and the launch mode. Here are some additional uh, reboots in case that is needed, but we have not specified anything. This is the tags page. Do we have no associated tags? And then here we can also attach blog volume. So this is just additional storage 
if we want to create, for example, a D drive on the system. So if I'm going back to the compute instances, I will see that my machine is being loaded. So now it's in provisioning state. The machine is still being created. I will move this to the side right now. I will put it back when we have an alpha 5. So let me show you some networking. So here are some virtual while this machine will be created. So this is our Quistor virtual cloud network, which of course has been created up front again. So from here we have some subnets. So we have created a subnet for every availability domain. So in this case, we have a VLAN for availability domain one, and as well as two and three. And inside these VLANs, there is a routing table and a security list. So all these details are on the left side over here. So let's go through them really quick. So we have some routing tables, the default one, which can be shown. Oh, by the way, so we can see the machine is now almost ready. In, uh, it already responds to the public IP address. So I will kill this command. And then we have the gateway, dynamic routing gateway. And of course, the security list is really important, as here you will specify what can be allowed. So we have some ingress and egress rules inside, inbound and outbound. So here we have, for example, all rules. So this is basically your firewall set up within the Oracle Cloud. So if you go back to the compute instance, the machine is already running. So it really took us like two or three minutes. And now as you can see the instance is running. So now you can we can access the machine. This is the username, Oracle Public Cloud, and this is the initial password. So I will copy this for now, open the notepad, put it to the side for myself, and then let's connect to the machine. So it's 130.61.34.78. So we can connect. Yes, we will. So here we go. This is really the machine already. The Windows machine, Windows 2000 server uh, 2012 R2. This is the OPC. I will fill in the password right now. Okay, here we are. Password is incorrect. Come on. Fortunately, we are not able to copy and paste it. So let me check it. Looks fine. Nice. So, first time we will have to change the password. So, a new password, I will just choose. With store webinar one was it okay yes so with store webinar one so thank you very much for changing and now the machine is up and running performance wise as you can see it's really quick you can choose the network and now the machine is just ready so now we can do whatever we want and also inside your private network as well it will be available so now i will shut it down or at least sign out and that's basically how easy it is to create a virtual machine in the oracle cloud